So look, when it comes to starting a business, there are a few constants that you can expect. Number one, it will be the best decision of your life. And number two, you're gonna have to face competition. And it's how you face this competition, it's how you approach the competition right from the start that will actually determine whether you'll be successful with your business or not. And so what I wanna share with you in this video is how to approach competition when it comes to social media marketing agency and how to stand out and completely destroy your competition in 2021. There's gonna be five sections to this video and you're really going to wanna stick around till the end because all throughout the video, I'm not gonna be giving you fluff, I'm gonna be giving you proven strategies that you can implement to make sure that you stand out from the competition and to make sure that you don't drown in the noise of the SMA space. So I'm super excited for this video. Here are the five sections that we're gonna cover. The first section is gonna be the importance of standing out from the competition. The second section is all about understanding why competition is for losers and what you should actually focus on instead. The third section is one of the reasons why I've been able to go from zero to $50,000 a month with my agency in less than two years without selling a course to an audience, just purely my agency, and that is the niche exponential growth effect. In the fourth section, we're gonna craft your irresistible offer so that when you go into the market to sell your services, you get into the sales and outreach portion of your social media marketing agency, you just cut through the noise and you destroy the competition. And the fifth section is gonna be understanding the trajectory of your agency from infancy to maturity stage. So without further ado, let's go right into it. First things first is understanding the importance of beating your competition. Now, from my experience of jumping on hundreds of calls with potential prospects, with clients, with people that then went on to become a mentee of mine, I've come to realize that there are a number of reasons why people don't succeed with their social media marketing agency or with their business. It could be not knowing where to start. It could be the inevitable challenges that come with building a business. It could be that they have limiting beliefs around making money. Yet the most obvious reason that I see time and time again is that people come to the space, they look at the top people just crushing it in the social media marketing space. And what they do is they try to emulate that. Instead of thinking creatively for a way to stand out from the competition, they go ahead and they try to fit in. They try to do what everyone else is doing. And look, I don't blame these people because that is one of the fundamental mistakes I see that is being made uh, when teaching SMA. Essentially, everyone is taking down the same path, which leads to oversaturation of the same type of agency. In reality, SMA is unsaturated. I'm not gonna talk about this again because I made a whole video on this uh, last week, but it is overpopulated in specific areas. For example, a Facebook ad agency. If you tell me that you are gonna be a Facebook ad agency for local businesses, for dentist clinics, or even e-commerce businesses, then I'm gonna say, great for you, but get in the queue because literally thousands of people are doing the exact same thing. I'm not saying you should not offer Facebook ads. In fact, my flagship service for my agency is Facebook ads, right? All I'm saying is that before you go into the market, before you start your sales and outreach, you should make sure that you have an irresistible offer that really stands out from the market and that is not the typical thing that everyone is offering. Because when you have an irresistible offer, your outreach sticks and it resonates with the market. And putting together that irresistible offer is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you in just a few minutes. But before we do that, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the idea that competition is for losers. And this is something that I spoke about in my previous video as well. But essentially going back to the main and most obvious mistake that I see people make when they start their agency, they look at the top people, right? And they go ahead and they try to emulate their offer. Not realizing that these people at the top already have uh, authority, right? They're already well established. They have a, a track record of getting results for clients. They have clients, right? Uh, they have a history of having clients. Um, and so they are in their chapter 20 while these people are starting their agency are in chapter one. Yet by trying to copy what the top people are doing, what they do unconsciously is they put themselves in the same playing field, right? And so all of a sudden now they're competing against these top people. And what happens is they cannot compete. And number two is they fall into the abyss of what I call me too agencies. Me too agencies have the same offer as every single agency out there. And me too agencies, unfortunately, generate me too income. So what you need to do instead is you need to pick your own very narrow lane at the start. And you should focus on dominating that niche. And the reason why you want to do that is because the top dogs don't have the same type of agility or attention to dominate a very small space. What the top dogs are good at, like for example, my agency, what we're good at is garnering a lot of authority, a lot of social proof that allows us to sign clients much easier. And we can sign a wide range of different clients. We can also get inbound leads, but we cannot dominate a very specific space like the ones I'm about to share with you. So what you frantically want to move away when you start out is you want to move away from these markets that are dominated by these top dogs, markets that have what, what's called perfect competition. Here are some of the criteria that you should watch out for that will tell you whether a market has perfect competition. Firstly, all businesses sell a very similar service or product. All businesses struggle to control the market price for their services. They also all have a relatively small share of the pie of the whole market. And buyers, in this case, clients have complete information about the services that are being offered and the price that they 
should be offered at. Sounds familiar? Well, that's literally because I just described the traditional SMMA market. So instead, we're going to be switching our mindset. And by dominating this specific lane that we just talked about, we're going to be building towards a monopoly type of agency where you begin with a very small market, you take over this market, and then you expand out to concentric circles. Essentially, you expand out to bigger markets. And the great thing about SMMA, and although I'm using these terms like monopoly and conquering and dominating your specific lane, is that if you even just sign four to five clients, you could be making 15 to 20K a month. For most people, that is a very good income, right? Obviously, it depends on your goals, your ambition, but you don't have to be the top dog in one specific lane just by being number two or number three in that very specific lane, not in a broad market, because you just wouldn't be able to do that as a beginner, but dominating the second place or the third place in a very specific market can already yield massive results because you don't have to sign hundreds of different clients or getting hundreds of people to use your very specific product. You just need a handful of people to build a decently successful SMA. So now that we have the mindset in place, we have the strategy of what we're going to be aiming for and why it's incredibly important to make sure that you dominate your specific lane Let's get practical. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you pick your market. You want to make sure you pick your niche. Now, if you're not new to my channel, it's obviously no secret that I vouch for e-commerce. I will continue to do so. And there's a number of reasons why that is. I've covered them extensively on other videos in my channel. You can check those out after this video. But what you want to do if you go down the e-commerce route is you want to make sure you narrow down into specific sub niche within e-commerce. Understand that if you're going for big clients, those big retainers, which by the way, you should not shy away from at the start. If you go down the broad e-com route, meaning your niche is just e-commerce, you're essentially competing with agencies like mine, with agencies that are way more established, have a lot more social proof, have had clients in the past, actually have built a name for themselves. Those things I just mentioned, you don't have. When you're starting out, you literally don't have experience. You don't have a track record. You don't have a history of clients, right? You don't have much confidence. Uh, and so when you're going up against those agencies, you're obviously not going to come out victorious. But what we can have if we go down a very specific sub niche is we have a monastic obsession with a very specific space. Let's just say you go down the tech space, right? You're going to know more about the tech space, the competitors, the way they make their money, the winning sales funnels, right? What products should be offered as upsells, right? How to build a very profitable back end. Okay. What type of message resonates with the tech audience? You're going to know way more about the tech space than these broad e-commerce agencies. When it comes to picking a niche, there's a wide variety of options that you can go down. If you want to get inspiration, you can literally just go to Amazon, uh, go in the category section, and there you will see tech, you will see apparel and fashion, you will see a home decor, you will see uh, beauty, right? You will see nutrition, you will see beverages, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. The final amazing benefit about picking a niche in the e-commerce space and really picking any niche in general that's quite specific is the niche exponential growth effect. And what that means is, let's just say that you've gone down the tech space. When you sign a tech client, it is literally a hundred times easier to sign another tech client. There's just something that I've come to realize that just clicks in the prospect's brain when you've had a client sign on in their same space. It's almost like a proof of concept. If this brand in my specific space that sells a very similar um, product, but it's not my my fierce competitor, right? Um, has actually invested into this team, has actually trusted this team, has put their confidence on this team, right? Then I'm much more willing to do that because there's a proof of concept in my specific space, right? Sure, it's easier to sign a tech client if you've signed an apparel and fashion brand uh, a month ago, right? Simply because you have a client, right? Uh, but we're, lo we're literally talking about a 100x difference when you sign another client in your chosen niche. This allows you to grow at an exponential rate. And the final amazing benefit that also leads to this niche exponential growth effect is the fact that you can tailor all your messaging. I'm talking about your mission. I'm talking about your outreach, your sales. You can tailor all that messaging to uh, your specific niche, right? So you can tailor all the message into the tech space. You can tailor your message into the apparel and fashion space. So that is the importance of picking your specific lane within the e-commerce space. And the next thing you want to do to make sure you stand out from the competition is you want to make sure you hit the like button on this video because statistically, most people will not do that. But in all seriousness, I'd really appreciate if you made that gray, ugly looking like button turn blue. Helps a lot with the algorithm and keeps me creating these videos for you. And with that being said, let's get back to the video. Now we're going to be talking about how to craft your irresistible offer. An offer that's just going to cut through the noise of the the SMMA space and make you heard in your specific niche. Now, the first thing that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to creating your irresistible offer is that we need to create a, an offer that is a magnitude of 10 better than what's out there in the market, right? So you need to create an offer that is 10 times better to what's regularly offered in your market. That is literally the way that you grow exponentially. You grow very quickly at the start. You cut through the noise and you destroy your competition. Now, here are the six elements of crafting your irresistible offer. Number one is you want to uncover the benefits. What is going to be your greatest service benefit? What are you going to be known for that's going to cut through the noise? Now, there are three main areas that I like to focus on. Number one is time. 
Number two is money. And number three is results. These are the three things that prospects care about. For example, when it comes to time, do you have a shorter engagement? For example, do you have a six week test phase? Now, while most agencies lock in their clients for six to 12 months, which could mean that the client feels like they're locked in for 12 months, right? And it's a big investment, big commitment from their side. Do you have a very irresistible six week test phase where the client can see the results that come through in six weeks? And then after the six weeks, they can decide whether they want to stay on. Or for example, when it comes to money, do you make most of your money on the performance driven incentives? right? Are you compensated for performance? Whereas most agencies just charge big fat retainers that are completely fixed, right? Regardless of their performance, do you make most of your money based on the results that you get your clients? When it comes to your results as an agency, do you have so much confidence that you can just offer a money back guarantee, right? Can you get clear on a specific metric? Can you tell your client, hey, if we don't hit this, I'm going to refund you your money. Now, those are obviously just some examples that you can consider, but the main thing is you want to pick just one in these three main areas. The next absolutely crucial part of building and crafting your irresistible offer is being unique. What does your agency actually stand for that plans a logical argument for your client to choose you over other candidates? For example, let's just say you pick a Mac over a PC. When you make that decision, you are choosing safety, you're choosing speed, you're choosing reliability over viruses and bloatware. The key is you wanna be unique when it comes to what you stand for and you wanna ask yourself when they choose you as an agency, what are they choosing when they come to you over the things that a traditional uh, SMA offers. Thirdly, you want to be specific and give evidence. For example, if you chose a money back guarantee, you want to make sure you get clear on a metric that you're shooting for, right? It could be, for example, if we don't hit your break even ROAS, then we'll refund you your money. Essentially, you want to be specific about your core benefit. Fourth, you want to keep it short and punchy. Ideally, it should make for a very cool and attractive slogan. Fifth, you're going to go ahead and integrate it into your sales and outreach. It should be within your core mission. It should be within every single false contact that you send out to prospects. It should also be in your social media profiles. And the sixth component of crafting your irresistible offer is you want to make it real. So as soon as you get some results that validate your core benefit, you want to make sure you scream those results from a mountaintop. You want to make sure you include them in your sales and outreach. You want to make sure you include them in your landing page, in your booking page. You want to make sure you tell people about it. Make sure that there's a proof of concept that validates your core benefit and it's just going to make it fly. Now, this obviously further down the line once you actually have clients under your belt. So it's not a vital component of your starting uh, irresistible offer, but it is quite essential that you do this going forward. So when you get results for a client, ask them if you can record a little video testimonial with them. Maybe have them fill out a client satisfaction survey. Anything that will make your core offer, your irresistible offer that you're preaching about real. So now we're on to the final section of the video, which essentially comes down to understanding the journey that we are about to embark on and the different stages that you will go through as an agency owner, how to make sure you conquer your specific lane and destroy your competition at every single stage of the journey. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that you're not going to be a tech agency forever. Right? Picking your sub niche within the e-commerce space is only vital when you're just starting out and you don't have any experience, track record or results and you need to get your foot through the door and grow very quickly. Once you feel like you've conquered that specific space, maybe you've onboarded five, seven clients in that specific space, then it is completely fine to rebrand yourself as an e-com agency. Now, for example, my agency at this point is rebranded to an e-com agency because we are dominating the e-com space, right? And so when you've dominated your specific lane, you feel like you already have a track record, right? Maybe you're getting a few testimonials, a few referrals, you've gotten really good results for these clients and you may start getting inbound leads. You may not want to turn off potential uh, prospects coming to you um, for services, for agency services, right? Maybe you're just doing tech brands and an apparel fashion brand comes to you that you really, really like. You don't want to turn them off as simply because you've just branded yourself as a tech agency. Now, bear in mind, that's never going to happen at the start, right? A lot of people are afraid that they're going to turn off potential candidates at the start. And that's just not going to happen. No one knows who you are. So you want to make sure you use that unfair advantage at the very start. But once you get clients to the door, once you have results, you can go ahead and rebrand yourself and move into bigger markets. And that's essentially the big difference between an infancy stage where you have to tap into a smaller market, dominate that market, and a maturity stage where you can move into wider markets and compete in those markets. So that is that for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I could take some of these strategies that we talked about today to make sure that you stand out from the SMA noise in 2021 and just absolutely crush it with your agency. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a massive thumbs up. Helps out a ton with the algorithm, the whole channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out this video right here where I show you how to guarantee client replies to your outreach, which is a pretty deadly combination once you've crafted your irresistible offer that we talked about today. And finally, if you're watching my videos and want to see more on social media marketing agency, entrepreneurship, digital marketing, and a ton of other really cool topics, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update from me. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.